Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Give me my money. Surely. How much? All of it. All of it? Every cent. Yes, sir. Nice morning, isn't it? Mm. There you are. Is uh, anything wrong? Not now. Give him my money, Tom. Give it all to me. Of course, Mr. Hindor. Right away. I, I know, ma'am, you want your money, but uh, you'll have to wait a moment. I'll need more cash. We've had some heavy withdrawals. Now, see here, young man, don't you try to put me off. You've got my money here, and I want it. You'll get your money, ma'am. Excuse me. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Wilkins, but I'll need some more cash. More cash? Why? Well, there seems to be a run starting, sir. In the last half hour, quite a few people have withdrawn all their money. How did it start? I haven't any idea, sir. All right, Tom, get what you need. Morning, Mrs. Peabody. Nice day, isn't it? Don't you nice day me, Jonathan Wilkins. I want my money. Tom's bringing more cash, Mrs. Peabody. But may I ask why you want your money? Because I'm worried, that's why. I don't think this bank is safe anymore. Oh? Who told you that? Never you mind who told me. It isn't true, Mrs. Peabody. This bank's as sound as any you can find. If it's sound, show me my money. All right, Mrs. Peabody. Just be patient. Keep paying as long as you can, Tom. And try to look cheerful. Yes, sir. Oh, Bert, have you any idea where this rumor started? I can't tell you, Jonathan. I promise not to. But I gotta find out, otherwise I'll be ruined. How about you, Otto? Where did you hear it? I can't tell you either, Jonathan, but uh, it is all over town. Oh, hello, Wilkins. Come on in. You know my uh, nephew, Ted? How are you? Hello, Mr. Wilkins. Ah, you look upset. Well, I've reason to be. Someone started a run on the bank. No. They started a rumor that the bank is shaky. There's no truth to it, of course, but you know how these rumors spread. Yes, yes, bad news does travel fast. I want to stop it before it gets too late. That's why I've come to see you. I'd like your help. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, you're the bank's largest depositor, and you have a reputation of being something of a financial wizard. I want you to tell the people that there's no reason for panic, that my bank is sound. Is it? Of course it is. You may see the books if you like. Oh, that won't be necessary. I'll take your word for it. I'll be very glad to do anything I can. That's mighty good of you, Burnett. I appreciate it. Well, I have an interest in the community, too. After all, I have adopted it. I wish all Easterners who come out here were like you. Well, I'll run along now. I want to see Judge Wills and some of the other boys. Bye, Mr. Wilkins. Bye. Well, it looks like our little plot is coming along fine, Ted. We'll wait till the panic reaches the climax, and then I'll withdraw my money. That should finish the bank. Then what? Well, the bank will have to call in its loans and sell its holdings to raise cash. We should be able to buy a lot of fine property and cattle around here for a song. What's wrong? Run on the bank. If it keeps up, it'll go broke.
quick trip, Tonto. Ah, I'm in a hurry to get back, Kimasami. There's trouble in town. Is there something wrong? Uh, people all take money from bank. Look like bank go broke. Oh, you mean there's a run on the bank? You may not know what it's called, Kimasabe, but everybody worried. Well, this could be serious, Tonto. Banks are important to the building of the West. A failure can cause people to lose their savings and impoverish a whole community. And that's plenty bad. Yes. But these things seldom start without a reason. I'd like to know more about this. Let's put our things away and ride into town and have a talk with the bank president. Mm. We're friends. Friends? Forgive us for using your private entrance, but I don't like to be seen on the streets. I can understand that, a man with a mask. I wear this mask to keep my identity a secret, but I am on the side of the law. Who are you? My name's not important, but perhaps this will help identify me. Silver bullet. A mask and an Indian friend. That's right. This is Tonto. Huh. I've heard about you, mister, and all you've done to help people who are in trouble. That's why I'm here, to help you if I can. I'm afraid there isn't much you can do in this situation. My friend knew many things people not expect him to. Yes, I know. But we're not dealing with outlaws now. This is different. I hear you're having a run on your bank. Please tell us about it. Well, there isn't much to tell. Someone started a rumor that the bank was shaky, and now it's all over town. Things keep up the way they're going, the bank will fail. That would be a disaster for the community. How does one fight a thing like this? Do you have any idea where these rumors start? No, it's always difficult to trace these things. And it's the kind of panic that feeds on itself. I assume your bank is sound. Of course it is. The state bank examiners were here last week, gave us a complete bill of health. But we don't keep all our resources in cash. And if everybody asks for money all at once, we're in trouble. Yes, I know. If I only had time to track this rumor down, I think I could scotch it. But my cash reserves will soon be gone, and I have to close the doors of the bank. Once I do that, I'm through. Well, can't you get help? If your books are in order, some other bank in the area should be willing to lend you aid in this emergency. The only bank close enough to help me is in Silver City. And the owner of that bank, well, he and I just don't get along. Don't think he'd lift a finger. The owner of the bank at Silver City is a friend of mine. Perhaps I could persuade him to help you. You know him? Quite well. We do him big favor once. And you'll ask him to help me? Not only for you, Mr. Wilkins, but for all the people in the community. If I can borrow enough to tide me over for a couple of days, I'll be all right. That'll give me time enough to prove my bank is sound. How soon do you need the money? Well, we close at three. I guess it'll be all right until then. But I must have the money before we open the doors at nine in the morning. That'll just give us time to get to Silver City and back. Another man would be useful. Is there anyone you can trust? My teller, Tom Willard. Good. Tell him to meet us at the north end of town just as soon as the bank closes. He'll be there, mister. Right. Come in. Oh, hello, Burnett. Wilkins? I've been circulating all over town. Looks pretty bad. Much worse than I thought. I don't know whether I'll be able to help you very much. Well, don't worry about it. I think everything's going to be all right. Oh, yes? What happened? A masked man has promised to help me. A masked man? A masked man and an Indian. <laughs> I don't blame you for looking puzzled, but if you knew as much about these two men as I do, you'd realize why I'm not worrying. Well, just what is this masked man planning to do? Bring help from Silver City? I expect him by nine tomorrow with enough money to tide me over this crisis. Well, that will get you out of a nasty predicament. Is he on his way now? No, Tom Willard's going along. They leave right after the bank closes. Well, I'm glad you found a way out of your difficulties. Thanks. I uh, only hope he doesn't fail you. He'll not fail. I'm sure of that. Panic's getting worse. A lot of ranchers have come in from out of town. Well, don't bother about that now. You've got a job to do. What is it? A masked man is on his way to Silver City to get help for the bank. You've got to stop him. A masked man? A masked man and an Indian. They're friends of Wilkins. They'll be easy to identify. Tom Willard's going with them. What do you want me to do? See that they don't get to Silver City. Avoid gunplay if possible, but do whatever's necessary. I'll need help. Well, get a hold of Charlie and the boys. If you hurry, you can get out on the trail ahead of them. They're not leaving till the bank closes. I'm on my way.
this looks like a good place for an ambush. Joe, get those horses out of sight. You and Max hide behind that rock over there. Bring the ropes with you. Come over here, Charlie. Relax, I don't see them yet. Those must be the men we're after. One of them's wearing a mask. Yeah, that's Tom Willard with him. I know his horse. All right, cover your faces. All right, get your hands up. Now get off those horses and don't make any false moves. You better do as he says. Get the guns. Now, march. Just what are you after? Never mind the talk, do what you're told. If this is a holdup, we have nothing of value. That's for us to decide. We just want to borrow your horses. If you take our horses, we'll be stranded. That's right. We're on an important mission. If you delay us, it'll mean disaster for many innocent people. That's just too bad. Now, get over there. Lay face down and put your hands behind you. Come on, hurry it up. All right, time up. Give me a rope, Joe. Keep covered. Well, that ought to hold them. Good. Joe, you and Max get the horses. Hey, don't you think we ought to gag them? Don't worry about that. They could yell their heads off out here and nobody'd hear them. Let's go. What'd you shoot for? We'll never catch them now. That's a general idea. When they stop running, they'll be a couple of miles away. Well, what are we going to do with this nag? Yeah, we'll take him with us. We'll let him go a couple of miles down the road. All right, let's go. There's something phony about this. So we're going to take our horses. Why didn't they steal our money, too? Ah. Them not act like horse thieves and not even try to take off your mask. I wondered about that. Apparently, their only purpose was to delay us. Well, somebody in town must have known about our plan. It looks like it. We've got to get out of these ropes. Silver! Silver! Come on, boy. Silver! Here, boy. Silver! Come on, big boy. Silver. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Yeah, come on. Get it. Come on, boy. Come on. Oh, good boy, Silver. Good boy. Are you all right, Tom? I'll be all right. The important thing is, can we still get to Silver City and back before morning? Tonto and I can make it on Silver and Scout. But I doubt if that's the proper plan now. What we do, Kimasami? Well, we'll find our guns and then head back for town. I want to have another talk with Mr. Wilkins. Kimasabi. Well, that's a row from one of their spurs. One man fall down when them leave. Maybe it break off then. That's possible. I'll keep this. It may be important. Come on, let's go. Tom, you ride with Tonto. What are you doing back here? We were way late and someone tried to steal our horses. What? The masked man thinks it was done to keep us from getting to Silver City. But I don't understand. Why should anyone want to do that? Has it ever occurred to you that these rumors about your bank might not have been accidental? That someone might have planted them who wants to cause you trouble? I know I hadn't thought of that. But of course it is possible. A shrewd, scheming man with money could turn a situation like this to his own advantage. He's right, Mr. Wilkins. This whole thing could have been planned. But who'd want to do a thing like that? Did you tell anyone that we were going to Silver City? Why, yes, I told a man named Burnett, Roger Burnett. Anyone else? No, I realized later it might be risky. Someone might try to waylay on the way back. Then Burnett is the only man who knew. That's right, but I can't believe he's involved in this. Why, he's the bank's largest depositor. He promised to help me all he could. Well, I'm convinced that someone is in back of this. It's the only explanation for the ambush. Well, I don't see what difference it makes. Without help from the Silver City Bank, 
I'm a ruined man anyway. How much gold and currency do you have left? Enough to last about an hour after we open in the morning. After that, I'm through. I see one possible way to save the situation and perhaps expose the men responsible, but I'll need your cooperation. At this point, I'm willing to try anything. What's your plan? Tomorrow, Tonto and Tom will start out... Come in. Good morning. Good morning, Burnett. I hope you don't mind our using your private entrance, but I wanted to see you before the bank opened. That's all right. What's on your mind? Have you heard from your messenger? Not yet, but I'm expecting him at any moment. Of course, I hope he shows up, Wilkins. But I must tell you, regretfully, if you don't get this help by 9 o'clock, I'll be obliged to remove my funds from your bank. Well, you're the bank's largest depositor. It'll be the finishing blow. I'm aware of that, but I must protect myself. And I'm afraid your bank's going under. I'm sorry, Wilkins, but uh, it's just good, sound business. Are you sure that's all you have in mind? What do you mean by that? The masked man. Did you bring the money, mister? If you look outside that window, I think you'll see something of interest. You made it! And just in time. Oh, this is Roger Burnett and his nephew, Ted. Mr. Burnett's the bank's largest depositor. He just told me he'll have to withdraw his funds. Perhaps he'll change his mind now. Where did this money come from? From a bank. You'd better open the doors and let them bring the money in. All right, folks, stand aside now. Let him in with the money. Is it real? The teller's window will reopen in five minutes. You'll see how real it is then. Put it in the office, boys. They just said they couldn't get to Silver City. Couldn't. I swear it. This is some kind of a trick. You sure? Positive. Let's put it right in here, boys. Plenty of room down here in the bottom. Put it in that vacant space there. Come on, men. Let's go inside and see what this is all about. You haven't got enough room, use that lower drawer. Well, I guess you won't want to withdraw your money now, Burnett. I'm not so sure. How do I know this isn't a trick? Trick? How do I know those bags contain gold? It could be just a bluff. Why do you assume that, Burnett? Well, I'm not assuming anything. I just want to look inside those bags. Don't let them fool you, men. It's my guess those bags contain nothing but rocks. It's just a bluff to try and save the bank. Why don't we open the bags? That's the easiest way to find out. That's a good idea. How about it? Why don't you do it, Burnett? Go ahead, Ted. It's gold. And it's real. Nothing wrong with the looks of it. It surely looks good to me. Hmm. Here, take a look. Hmm. I don't believe this money came from Silver City. I didn't say that. That's where you were headed. It's the only bank in this area you had time to reach. How did you know we were headed for Silver City? Well, I told him. That's how he knew. Did you tell anyone else? Well, of course not. Uh, what reason would I have for doing that? Why do you ask? Looks like you trapped yourself, Burnett. What do you mean? Someone tried to prevent us from reaching Silver City by holding us up and attempting to steal our horses. I think it was your nephew and another man that you hired. <laughs> That's ridiculous. No, it isn't. Because you and your nephew were the only ones who knew about our plan. That's right, Burnett. You're the only one I told about it. And you already admitted you didn't pass the information along. So you must be the one who planned that ambush. What reason would I have for doing that? To keep us from bringing help for the bank. In my opinion, you planned this whole thing. You started the rumors that the bank was shaky. You want it to fail. Nonsense. And I'm not going to listen to any more of this. Just a minute. I've got something to say. I don't know who you are, mister. But in spite of that mask, you sound like an honest man. And I'm beginning to wonder about this bird. He's the one that told me the bank was shaky, Jonathan. But he swore me to secrecy. Said he was doing me a favor. He tells me the same thing. He advises me to take my money out. I believe him then. But I do not now. Well, Burnett? All right. Suppose I did start the rumor. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> There's no law against it. You're right, Burnett. Unfortunately, there are no laws against spreading a malicious rumor. But there are laws against holding people up. 
and attempting to steal horses. Well, you can't prove I had anything to do with that. I think I can. One of the men who ambushed us broke a rowel off of his spur. He's here in this room right now. I recognized his voice. Let's see the spur on your right boot, Ted. I think we'll find that this rowel fits. There's the other one. All right, boys. Let's get these varmints over to the sheriff's office. Come on. Uh, Out you go. Well, mister, looks like you've done it again. Now, what's more important, we've stopped the run on the bank. Burnett and the others will get what's coming to them. The people of this town will see to that. Excuse me, mister, there's something I do not understand. Yes? If you didn't get to Silver City, where did all this money come from? Burnett was right about one thing. We did play a trick. That gold and currency came from this bank. We took it out last night and brought it back this morning. It is the bank's own money? What's left okay. after the withdrawals? You see, at the time, we weren't sure that Burnett was responsible for the panic. We had to do something to force his hand. But the bank, uh, does that mean it is still in trouble? No, there's nothing wrong with this bank, and there never was, until Burnett started those rumors. If necessary, I can get help from Silver City, but there's no need for that now. Huh. Time to open the bank, Mr. Wilkins. All right, Tom, but first you better give me that gun. You'll have no more need for that. No, I guess not. Jonathan. Jonathan. I would like to be your first customer this morning. I would like to put my money back in. And I'll be very glad to get it, Otto. Uh, if you'll excuse me. Of course. Tano and I have to be on our way. Mister, thanks for everything. Goodbye. Who is that man? He's a good friend of all of us, Otto. He's the Lone Ranger. Hey! 